Hey, my creative friends. My name is Shannon from shannonstudio.com. And I'm here to talk about um, a creative lifestyle. What mine looks like, what maybe yours looks like, and the things that we can do to maybe do a little bit different that, so that we can keep being creative. So today, you know, sometimes it's just a crazy house, even with just three people. I'm like, hey, hey, Joan, today has been, uh, no, not today, today's been fine. It's this evening when we're all together. Sometimes it's just crazy, crazy. Sometimes tensions get high. I mean, it's bedtime, it's, you know, long day, all these kinds of things, and it just, interactions start to get strained. And if you are in any kind of familial relationship where you live with people, it's going to happen. It's not, it's not, oh, we can, we can just avoid those kind of things. No, it's just, it happens. It happens. So today was, I mean, tonight was one of those nights where it was happening and I was just like, it made me think of, you know, we, we want certain things in order to be great because I've got to come back downstairs. I mean, I was upstairs with them and, and then I came back down and it's like, I'm going to do the video and then I'm going to paint some more, which I'm just going to show you my little painting here. I got a little painting going on. I'm really happy with how it's turning out. So I'm going to paint some more. But, you know, when you've got tension and you've just got agitation going on, it's it's just hard to make the transition. And I think there's an interplay with calmness and creativity. I mean, does how you know, it's like the chicken egg. Which comes first? Do you just sit down and get calm because of the creativity or... Does creativity lend for you to be more calm because it affects our moods and, and it affects our attitudes? So it's kind of like inner place. But when you're in the middle of something, it's like you don't really care. <laughs> you don't really care what comes first or whatever. It's and But that's kind of when the time you have to just kind of push yourself through it and to do it anyways. And if it's a habit, like it is for me, it's a habit, then I just sit down and do it and then I, you know, the calmness comes and it just it just kind of fades away. Um, in Elizabeth Gilbert's Big Magic, she talks about um, Herman Melville. He's the one who wrote Moby Dick. Now this is kind of what he's looking for when he wants to write. Melvin said that he longed for a big, wide open stretch of time in which to create. He, <laughs> Don't we all? He called it the calm, the coolness, the silent grass growing mood in which man ought always to compose. But that was, but that's sort of, okay, so first off, that's what she says that he said. And, and it's like, I could totally, I have been so guilty of that. It's like, if I could just have a chunk of time, if I could just, if I could, you know, just not have, you know, anybody agitated tonight, if I could, you know, if I could just not have coronavirus worries going on, coronavirus, um, you know, we have that going on all over the place and, and people canceling things and, you know, more cases coming out and um, uncertainty, just all kinds of things. So we we long to have calmness and certainty and an idyllic sort of environment in which to create. So she goes on to say, um, but, that sort of luxuriousness simply does not exist for him. I'd say, I'd add, for any of us. Um, he was broke, he was stressed, and he could not find the hours to write in peace. Yet, he couldn't, and, and that's what he was looking for, that's what he longed for, But and yet he still wrote Moby Dick. Yet he still found time somewhere. It, And this is what she says, it does, um, it does not mean that creativity, that it does not mean that creative living is always easy. It merely means that creative living is always possible. Hey, hey, Carrie. So we are always looking for the prime time in order to create. We're looking for the, you know, we, where we don't have the stress, where we don't have the worries. And the reality is we can keep waiting for that space and not do anything, or we can realize that that kind of space and time and it is really is a luxury. We have to learn how to create despite that. And, um, you know, and like even with the, like I was saying with the 
coronavirus. I mean, Alan and I are talking about it. We're thinking about it. We're taking temperatures before he goes to school. We're, he's not supposed to go to school if he has a cough. And, you know, there's several people who are keeping their kids home. I mean, and that's, it's a thing here too. It's a thing all over the world. And we're all concerned. And, you know, people are um, stopping things and not people are not able to work. And it's just like, it's a, it's a big deal. And I think, you know, we still... It, I think it will, it might go, it might, it's going to continue to go on for a little while. So do we, do we stop everything and wait for the calm or do we push through it? And I say we push through it. Um, um, here's from Wired to Create that talks about Vincent Van Gogh. And Vincent Van Gogh had anxiety, depression, possibly bipolar, and he was in asylum. So he really struggled um, with his own emotional and mental issues. So um, in Wired to Create, he says, Van Gogh's illness sometimes rendered him unable to paint. But when he was able to work, painting gave him a sense of peacefulness and purpose. So sometimes it's just physically we can't do it. But we, you know, he was able to con return to it as soon as he could. He, because he found something in it that calmed him. And that's why I was kind of talking about what, you know, calm and creativity, they kind of, you know, play off of each other. He kept going back to it. Even though he was mentally incapacitated, he still would go back to it. We still have to find ways to get back to creating even with the stresses, even with the demands, even with the worries. Um, Elizabeth Gilbert also says, realities dema realities demands are constantly pounding on the door and disturbing creative people. They are. So tonight we had like a little, you know, meltdown and tensions were high and strained. But you know what? That's just, that's life for everybody. But I think being a creative person, we have that extra edge because we know the benefits. And if you don't know, go to my website, look up under the welcome, there's benefits of creativity, read those things. We know that if we participate in creativity, that even though we have all these demands, even though everybody's worried about coronavirus or everybody's got you know things going on in their lives, that we know that there are answers to help us deal with these things in a better way. We can deal with them better. We can be in a better mood. We can find more relief if we are creative. So it's almost like not an option. If we, you know, even with all these other things, it's not an option. Be creative because it's going to make you better. So um, the tip tonight was to be creative despite reality, despite what's really happening. And sometimes people want to use it as an excuse, which, yeah, I could see totally where it would be nice tonight to go, you know what? Everybody was just high strung tonight, so let's just not create. Um, luckily, I have a deadline that forces me to do it sometimes instead of caving into what I might want to. And I know in the long run, it's gonna be, it's gonna make, it's gonna be better. I mean, because that habit develops inside of us emotional wellness. That's the bottom line, read the research. So. Be creative despite what's really happening. And that's all I have. So tell me, um, is anybody else worried about coronavirus around you guys? You can share that too, because that's reality. And and um, we deal with these things, but um, we still be creative, even though things are going on around us. And some of us, you know, some people might have to be off work. It's a great time to be creative when you can't go into work. Uh, I'm wondering how it's going to play off. I, um, our church has, um, I belong to the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and they have a general conference where people come from all over the world, all over the world to come to this twice a year. And I believe I just heard that they are canceling it. Not canceling it. They're only going to broadcast it. So they're only going to do, so people who, you know, so people don't come, so it doesn't spread. So, you know, when you have large groups of people, you have all those kind of germs flying around. So anyways, maybe you could just like give me some calming words. That might help. So remember, you have a creative heartbeat, so listen for it. And I will be back tomorrow and probably a much calmer evening than what I had tonight.
I'll see you. Bye. Oh, Carrie said, I'm more worried about the crazy people who are freaked out about the virus. <laughs> you know what? Even it, it, some people say, I've talked to some people and they say it's going to just run its course like regular flus. But what I'm most worried about is that the, the economic hardship that's going to be because people are closing things down, people aren't traveling. That's going to be really hard on, on us, on worldwide us. Oh, hey, hey, Trisha. I was just leaving, but I had to, Carrie made a comment and I just had to like have a little conversation. So anyways, we'll carry on more of our conversation in the comments. I'm going to go and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.